This is the Krillcast. I'm Chris. And I'm Will. And we are not here to tell you about our Twitter account, but go follow it. Twitter.com mm-hmm. slash Krillcast or at Krillcast. C-H-R-I-L-L-C-A-S-T. I occasionally make an appearance now. <laughs> Will has a Twitter account now. It's I know. Krillcast Will underscore Will. Hell hath frozen over. And I have one too for me, but I don't ever use it. It's Krillcast Chris. <laughs> It used to be Chris Crash 92. I fixed it. Now, now it's Krillcast Chris because who cares about my Xbox Live profile? Anyways, <laughs> um, so what we want to talk about today is the fact that holy cow, we have 167 subscribers. How did this happen? That's amazing. Um, by the time this video comes out, we'll probably have far more than that. But mm-hmm. right now, when we're recording it, 167. <laughs> we also now have merch. Go Heck check yeah. it out. There's a link on the YouTube channel. I also have it on our. Um, official Facebook and Twitter pages. Uh, it's teespring.com slash the Krillcast merch. It's like dash dash. Let's see. Uh, teespring.com slash store slash thus uh, dash Krillcast dash merch. I think if you just type in teespring.com slash Krillcast. Whoa. What was that? Was that on your end or my end? It was a poor connection alert. Yeah, if you just type in uh, okay. teespring.com slash Krillcast. This comes up, and you can select whichever piece you want. Mm-hmm. And it's featuring the lonely Bill the Crow. Yeah. Yeah. And nobody will know. Some friends. Nobody will know what the heck you're wearing, but that's okay. And there's multiple colors. See, like there's yeah, gray. We didn't make him a jail the Krill. Yellow, yellow, white. I know that's what Will's gonna get. Mm-hmm. We can I even wanna... make Bill and Jill make a little heart together. Looking at the white sweatshirt Chris just ignores me like, get the gray up. sweatshirt these are some premium sweatshirts at $30 okay and then the mug comes in three colors so you can get white black or krill cast yellow what do you know bam that's perfect mm-hmm. alright so just go ahead and yes. get your coffee mugs your shirts and if you like stickers you know and I don't know why but they also threw in this iPhone case you know whatever man mm-hmm. you know, if you like iPhones yeah. and you want a case <laughs> good to go um, mm-hmm. Now onto the subject. Today we're going to be doing what is it, Will? Oh no, 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 mine. This is mine. It's yours. Throw the throw the throwback Thursday. All right. <laughs> Today for Throwback Thursday, we're going to be talking about not Austin Evans. We talked about him on nope. Tuesday. We're going to be talking about this game. As Chris brings it up, Jade Empire. Bam. Mm-hmm. The full game trailer for this is a minute long. It's a big trailer. All right, Asper Media. Hey, by the way, Asper Media is like the best console to mobile phone port developer ever. Hmm. They did Night Solar Republic, and they did Jade oh, Empire. Okay. Yeah, they are one of the best porting companies on the internet. Shout out to Asper Media. You guys are awesome. I have been super satisfied with Night Solar Republic on mobile. It's amazing. And adding the controller support just made it way better. Anyways, um, so here's some stats I can give you guys on Jade Empire. Yep. All right, let me get to my script here. Read the script. No. <laughs> Jade Empire was released as an exclusive on the original Xbox on April 12th, 2005, which is why we're covering this in April in 2020, 15 years later. Um, it was released as a co developed by BioWare and Microsoft. It was re-released on the PC in 2007, on the Mac in 2008, and on mobile phones in 2016. The development of Jade Empire began in 2001 as a dream project for company co-founders Ray and Greg, who acted as the... I'm not going to pronounce their last names. I'll give it a shot. (laughs) Ray Muzika and Greg Zesh... Okay, that's my best best attempt. Who acted (laughs) as the game's executive producers their first original role-playing intellectual property. The game reused the morality system from Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, but switched to a real-time combat system. Upon release, it received widespread critical acclaim. Its success led to the creation of the PC version, which provided the basis for future ports and itself met with positive reviews. In January of 2007, BioWare staff announced there were no plans to develop Jade Empire 2. So disappointing. However, BioWare's co-founders stated in September 2011, it's an IP, it's a setting that we are really passionate about, and we still are. 
both Greg and I are we're big believers in the IP. We're just looking for the right way to deploy it. Could be a half life yep. situation, you know, twenty years later. Oh, let's do Jade Empire too. Or it's gonna be an EA situation where like, oh, we can stick microtransactions in this. <laughs> In 2009, Games Radar included Jade Empire among the games with untapped franchise potential, commenting the original game yeah. had all... Untapped as in untapped microtransaction potential. <laughs> Let me finish reading, Will. Okay. Sorry. The original game had all the trappings of franchise material with engrossing characters, magnificent settings, and unique take on and a unique take on martial arts fueled RPG combat. But until hard evidence of a sequel's existent, existence materializes... Will continue yearning for Bioware's one-off hit to attain franchise status. Yep. Okay. So, what do you think the possibility of Bioware slash EA returning to this franchise fifteen years later is? Not good. <laughs> <laughs> that's my. That's what I have to say about that. It's a great okay. game, <laughs> and I just I have very little hope that it's coming back. I would say. If they release Knights of the Old Republic, um, the remake or whatever they're talking about doing, mm-hmm. if that actually happens, maybe, <laughs> maybe this one would happen too, right? So like, yes or no, Chris. There is no maybe. <laughs> here's what I'm thinking: they do Knights of the Old Republic remake, and it's successful, regardless of how I feel about the actual story-driven narrative they put in there. Mm-hmm. There is a huge possibility this game would make a comeback either as a remake or a sequel in between the first Knights of the Republic remake and the second Knights of the Republic remake or the High Republic, whatever the heck they call it. If they release a Star Wars Knights of the Republic styled game and it's okay, it is successful, in between that and the second one they would make, remaster this followed by, if this is successful, a another sequel to an old franchise. They get Jade Empire number two after Night Chill Republic 2. Maybe. In dream mm-hmm. scenario of Chris, I mean, a- yeah. Chris here, maybe. Or they're just going to keep you know, pumping out Knights of the Old Republic games. I don't know. I mean, the engine will work for multiple games, right? If they can make it work for Knights of the Old Republic. Oh, well, Frostbite. They're going to be like, Frostbite uses, works for everything. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> just like Telltale. Never change yeah. your engine. Never. Um, what other high quality one off franchises never got a sequel? Can you think of any? No. <laughs> hmm. All the ones I was thinking of was like, oh, that's a part of the series. Are you kidding me right now? Come on, Will. Which, which discussed, one am I missing? We discussed this on a Fandom Friday years ago. Not years ago. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. That can't be right. <laughs> last year. Chris. Last year. All right, give me the first letter. <laughs> I'm going to give you three letters AMA. AMA. L U R. Oh, Kingdoms of Amalur. Oh, you're so right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, yeah, oh, I am very much holding out hope. And I actually, there is a little bit of hope for that one because that IP was recently bought by THQ. Nordic. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, it's just, 2018. Yeah. That'd be great. That'd be good for yeah. you. Mm-hmm. Maybe they'll get the Asper Media treatment, get it on mobile. I don't care if it's on mobile. <laughs> play there. But I would love it if they remastered it. They don't bankrupt Rhode Island this time and <laughs> make a sequel. That'd Wait, that's right. Didn't they like accidentally bankrupt the state or something? Yeah, they, they totally did. <laughs> that's such a weird thing to happen. We need yep. to discuss this game on like a throwback Thursday in the future. I see. Definitely need to do that. Um, let me think. A mm-hmm. one-off game that never got a sequel. Um, Frogger. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Obviously Sonic. <laughs> well, Pod Racer. I mean, it kind of got a sequel. It got like a mm-hmm. halfway sequel. It's been ported multiple times. But I would love to see a Star Wars Pod Racing sequel game that That'd followed the events. You know, like the first one kind of follows some kind of storyline. But it'd be really cool to get like a, a like Need for Speed Most Wanted style storyline with a bunch of pod racers from the Star Wars universe. That would be mm-hmm. amazing. It would be. I would buy that up. How about Star Wars Republic Commando? Oh, yeah. That's another one that I would love that at least a remaster because the graphics are okay, but I would love to remaster that game and uh, a sequel. That would be great. I just discovered that my Xbox 360, I have purchased this game already. 
Oh, really? And I just downloaded it last night, so I'm going to play it. Oh, yeah, heck yeah. I just discovered this. I was like, what? Let's see if you can make it past the first level this time. <laughs> um, and another one that I would love to see a sequel to, Age of Mythology. Mm. We've got Age of Empires 1, 2, 3, and now apparently 4 is eventually going to come out. And on top of that, they have this other franchise, Age of Mythology. Never did anything with it. Would love to see a sequel, Age of Mythology 2. Yes. And even if it just didn't, I don't even care if it covers a different type of mythology. It could be a completely different one altogether. It's fine. Mm -hmm. Um, So the last thing I want to talk about, can Bioware still develop games as well as they did 15 years ago? No. No. (laughs) <laughs> I think uh, the last like five or six years have proven that they are incapable of doing it anymore. I mean, there's always hope. Like, I don't want to give up hope on a great studio because, I mean, Rare was the same way. Rare had not made a good game in a long time. And they, I love Sea of Thieves. And they're coming out with a new IP that looks really promising. So there's a chance that Rare is coming back. So I hold that hope that Bioware can come back. But I don't have much hope. <laughs> Hey, just I a small sliver. <laughs> understand. Um, I would say the last great game that Bioware made was Mass Effect Two. Yeah, I would say three was good. Three was great good. until the ending. It was between good and great, but the last great game they made was Mass Effect Two. I mean, that was the the peak of Bioware as a developer mm. was Mass Effect Two. I don't think there's a game that anybody would try and argue with me and say, "No, man, that was not, it." Was definitely Dragon Age Origins or something. You know, nobody's going to jump on Anthem. Here. Okay, that was a masterpiece. Who was? Did we just uh, Covenant Canon or who liked Anthem recently? Was it Covenant Canon? I don't, I don't remember. Somebody we not just me. had on here liked it. Um, no, it was Zio. Wasn't it Zio? Zio liked Anthem. I don't I remember so. him saying that. I think he did. Anyways, that's okay. I'm not worried about it. Um, don't yeah, don't name anyone. That that's an insult. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think he actually argued and said it was actually not a bad game. It was just not what people were expecting. Anyways, okay. um, he also really liked Final Fantasy fourteen, which is, a lot of people like that one. Um, yeah, well, I was expecting a good game, <laughs> and then it turned out to be terrible. That's why I didn't like. It. All right, did you play on. Anthem? <laughs> Are you sure I did. You played I, this game? I bought Anthem for my niece, and I played it before I gave it to her, and it was terrible. All right, so Jade Empire. <laughs> Honestly, I I like the idea of Jade Empire. I am not a fan of the actual gameplay of Jade Empire. But I do think it is a super cool franchise. I think the story is great. I think there's a market for this um, if they were to re-release this. Yeah, I liked it more when I played it because it was actually like real-time action instead of the slot system like uh, Knights of the Old Republic had. Um, but, I mean, they're very similar games. Just one has, you know, like a martial arts t- twist to it and the other one is Star Wars, so... Arguably, I like this system with the, the choices and stuff, mm-hmm. in my it just makes a great game. I love the choices morality system. I, that yes. is one of my favorite elements of video games because in real life, you know, every choice you make has an impact. So I love seeing that implemented in a game. Um, and that's why I fell in love with Night Solar Republic. It was one of my first mm-hmm. first RPG experiences with like a social choice and morality system. And then going from there to Mass Effect, holy cow, I loved it. <laughs> I was like, this is amazing. This is like mm. this is basically Star Wars and Halo combined. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyways, um, but as far as Bioware doing this again, could they pull this off if they were to make a sequel to this game? I would love to find out, but I don't think Obsidian so. Obsidian could do it. <laughs> make it an Xbox exclusive. The thing is, covering these games reminds me of a time when Xbox had exclusives. Really yeah, good ones. This was exclusive. <laughs> um, and it just makes me sad that that is no longer the case. Yeah, that, that's totally true. I mean, at one point in time, the Xbox Game Studios were much more established players with much higher quality uh, yeah. IPs. The thing is, obviously, I love Halo, as you can see behind me, but I do like variety every now and again. I would love to have a new Bioware game, like the Bioware of old, um, but can't get that anymore. Yeah, Bioware was amazing back in the day. I, I can't mm-hmm. think of a better RPG, Western RPG maker than Bioware back in the day. Yeah. Um, Lionhead. 
<laughs> That's a completely when did, different. When did they game. make Fable? Was it after these games or before? 2005, I think. The first... No, so... don't quote me on that. <laughs> I'm going to be really disappointed in myself if I get that date wrong because I've played that game so often. Every time you say Lion's Head, I think of Lion's Gate. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, but yeah, Jade Empire. Probably one of the best mm-hmm. uh, original Xbox titles as far as Western RPGs go. Um, and it definitely deserves a second chance, second breath of fresh air. Go check it out. Yep. As Definitely. always, I'm Chris. And I'm Will. And we will see you on the next Krillcast. Go Bye, buy the merch. <laughs> Wear it, put it in tweets. See you. <laughs>